Hey Psych2Goers, welcome back to our channel and to a brand new video. Are you or someone you know an INFJ? INFJ is the rarest MBTI personality type out there, making up less than 1% of the population. So they could oftentimes be perceived as mysterious and private to people who they aren't well acquainted to. Being both an introvert and an empathetic personality type, INFJs also have tendencies to watch their language to avoid hurting someone. But even so, there are ways to understand the fallback phrases that an INFJ may find themselves using. Whether you are an INFJ or know someone who is one, you could learn the true meanings behind what they say, helping you understand the workings of the rarest personality. Please note, the MBTI personality inventory is a list of rough tendencies rather than strict classifications. This video's primary intention is for providing entertainment and lighthearted content. With that said, here are six things an INFJ says and what they really mean. Number one, it's been a while, how are you? Do you like catching up with your friends and knowing what they're up to? A dry, generic response like, I'm fine, would leave an INFJ coming up with an equally vapid response. An INFJ is at home diving into deep topics that touch people's souls or discussing something fun and evocative. Talking about surface level pleasantries is not the INFJ's intention when asking, how are you? The question is aimed to get to know what's in another's mind and probe to find someone who is willing for deeper conversation. Number two, don't worry about it. It's not important. Have you ever thrown this phrase around even when your emotions don't match what you're saying? An INFJ is a true introvert at heart, complete with being conflict averse and having a low energy threshold. When communicating a particular problem leads to nowhere, it's dismissed altogether. Oftentimes an INFJ could even feel uncomfortable disclosing too much information about a sensitive topic, especially to people they don't know that well. So either of the phrases helps retract the topic from the conversation. Number three, can we talk about it later? Have you ever been told to expect a follow-up from a friend only for it to never happen? While INFJs love social connection, it can also be easily overwhelming. Being stuck in a difficult conversation leaves an INFJ drained and wishing to end the chat right then and there. So this phrase means wishing to postpone the conversation to a later time after being recharged and continuing it from there, or hoping to end the conversation altogether as it wasn't worth pursuing. So in that scenario, this phrase is used in hopes that the topic would never be brought up again without having to say it outright. Number four, but I don't know anyone. Do you like parties with many unfamiliar faces and new acquaintances? When an INFJ says this phrase, they actually mean to show their discomfort and apprehension in attending an unfamiliar social gathering. While introverted thinkers would bluntly reveal their apprehension to their friends saying, I don't wanna go, an INFJ is generally more conflict averse and open-minded. Using this phrase shows hope that there would be great people to meet there, while also dreading the feeling of experiencing something new, potentially draining and uncertain. Number five, sorry I missed your call. Can you text? Have you ever received an unknown call? Do you look forward to answering it? <laughs> Let's face it, you may have heard of phone call scams running amok with deceptive salespeople on the other side of the line prompting you to buy something, and no one wants that, especially not the INFJ. Chances are an INFJ probably saw the phone ringing and decided not to pick it up. This could be caused by being too busy, anxious, or plainly disinterested. If you're friends with an INFJ, many of them would vastly prefer you text them beforehand. And number six, sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Are you a prolific daydreamer? The INFJ mind is powerful, creative, and inventive. And oftentimes their mind could pull them away from reality. Being lost in thought for long stretches of time rarely makes them feel bored. However, zoning out even if another person is talking, which is rarely ever well received, is also highly likely. And after coming back to reality, saying something like this phrase is essentially saying that, I'm sorry for ignoring you, but if you could repeat what you said, it would be much appreciated. Do you catch yourself saying the same things above? Whether you are an INFJ or you know someone who shares that personality type, learning about these telltale phrases can help you communicate better with this rare personality trait. When you know the things an INFJ says and what they mean, you're better able to foster long-term relations and understand them better. Who knows? you might even be the first to let them know they're a rare personality type. Can you think of any other paradoxes related to INFJs? Or did any of these points describe you? Leave a comment down below about your encounters with them if you'd like. Please feel free to share any thoughts you have as well. 
If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit the like button and share it with those out there figuring out what these mean. Don't forget to subscribe to Psych2Go and hit the notification bell for more new videos. Thanks for watching.